Next is a frame that specializes in heavy crowd control. Playing tricks with her opponent's mind, she can swiftly turn the tides of battle in her favor. So let's find out why she is such a scary force on the battlefield. Well, to begin with, all enemies affected by Nyx's abilities have a chance at being permanently disarmed, which as you'll soon see is an amazing thing since she has quite a few area of effect abilities. Her first skill however is not one of those, but it's probably one of my favorite skills in the game. Mind control turns an unfortunate, or fortunate enemy, into Nyx's personal slave for a period of time, which is awesome in itself, but it doesn't end there. Any aura, skill or summon of said enemy will help your team instead. Need a healer? Mind control an ancient healer and it will heal your team instead, while also applying the insane damage reduction aura as well. Or should you need shields, there's always that poor helpless shield osprey ripe for the taking. Mind control the right thing at the right time and you can fill a small gap in your team's defenses when needed. Using the augment mind freak the damage of the control target is increased by 500%. And keep in mind that the target can also be affected by powers of other frames, like Rhino's Roar, making the target deal heavy amounts of damage. Psyche Bolts, however, is probably Nyx's worst ability, throwing what can only be described as slightly homing, yet kinda drunk confetti at the enemy, Nyx does lackluster damage to targets hit with a 50% chance to apply a radiation status proc. You'd think the augment pacifying bolts could save the skill, since enemies hit will be stunned for 10 seconds. But as you'll soon see, the other skills are far more viable options. Speaking of which, Chaos is Nyx's third skill, and it's amazing! Upon casting it, Nyx basically forces all enemies in a radius around her to perceive each other as hostiles, thus creating chaos on the battlefield. And I mean it, all the debuffs and negative auras get applied to their former allies as well. They get affected by fire and slow auras from Eximi, Eximi, Eximuses? Ah, uh, whatever, as well as buffs not applying to each other, which makes it especially useful at dispatching infestants since the damage aura from ancient healers no longer applies to them. All of that while they're also attacking each other and gaining increased threat generation so they're less likely to attack the Tenno, but make no mistake, they'll still murder you if you're the only one in their line of sight. The Augment Chaos Sphere basically creates a constantly shrinking bubble centered around Nyx that lasts for half of the skill's duration and every enemy that enters it gets affected. Though I don't really find it useful since you can just max out your power efficiency and reuse the skill again to get its full range effect in an instant. With the help of Absorb, Nyx creates a bubble around her that absorbs all incoming damage and stores it, but at a cost of energy depending on how much damage is absorbed. Then at the press of a button, Nyx releases also damage as magnetic damage in a radius around her, damaging enemies and knocking them down. Maxing out your range, which I personally do since it also increases the range of chaos, means you'll get a nearly free long range knockdown on demand by just quickly tapping for a couple of times. Absorb also makes Nyx the only frame in the game that can completely deny damage to a defense objective, like a cryopod, console or an extractor. Even melee enemies will not be able to damage it, which with the help of chaos makes Nyx one of the strongest frames in the game for such missions. Even though Nyx is immune to all damage and negative effects while casting the skill, she still gets affected by two things, and those are energy leech Eximus enemies, so always keep an eye out on your energy bar, and of course, yet again, Corpus Nullifier is sneaking up on you and deactivating Absorb. Assimilate is the augment that allows Nyx to move while casting Absorb at half speed while also reducing the Absorb's bubble radius by 50%. But you can somewhat bypass the slow by using certain melee combos. This makes it pretty invaluable when in a sticky situation because you can simply just waltz out of it. Or if walking ain't your thing, maybe a more direct route is. So remove that augment and well, take to the skies, because apparently Titania and Zephyr felt a bit lonely up there. Just be careful of Absorb's increased threat generation because after it pops there's a small window where enemies will gladly send you flying into outer orbit. The builds, or rather build that I use, is virtually the same, just the augments changing because having max range and efficiency with decent duration just feels like a must have for Nyx. In the conclave, well, let's just say that if a Nyx has enough energy, you better keep your distance, like really keep out of her skills range unless you plan on one-shotting her, because when she's around there's no fun allowed. Well, unless you're the Nyx. And it's rather amusing. Even the toughest of frames will make a 180 when afflicted by her skills, and you'll be doing that a lot while fighting the Nyx since there is simply no way to counter some of her skills. 
For example, after casting Mind Control, your target will be staggered for a brief moment, interrupting movement, firing and casting, after which it cannot deal any damage to Nyx or her allies for a few seconds, which is just outright insane, like, who even thought this is gonna be a good idea? If you ever get hit by the skill, just run, run like hell and hope that Nyx has a horrible aim because you have no way of fighting back. Don't forget about that instant stagger as well, as it will quickly ground any flying warframe and allows you to put one shot into them before they can even move. Psychic bolts ain't all that bad of a skill here, though the 50 energy cost is a bit high for what it does. Homing on targets after they locked on, only Terrain will be able to deny those bloodthirsty confetti of their sweet juicy prey. Basically a good skill for harassing and finishing off wounded enemies, it even does decent damage while confetti hit, so you better dash behind cover quickly and hope for the best because this skill is a bit of a hit or miss depending on how many of those things actually hit their mark, which they often don't, but when they do you'll definitely feel it. Chaos is the best and worst skill at the same time. Why, you may ask? Well, it all comes down to what game mode you're playing. In Team Annihilation, it's probably one of the strongest skills, since it basically enables friendly fire on enemies, while also making them see their allies as hostiles. And seeing two of your enemies kill each other by mistake or on purpose never gets old. But use this skill in solo Annihilation and it does absolutely nothing. Zero. Really, I'm not joking. It's so useless it won't even make Atlas's drumblers attack each other. Might as well remove your 3 key so you don't accidentally press it and waste energy. And Absorb, well, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Sure, it protects you from damage and you can release a portion of same damage back to the attacker while also knocking them down, but if you fail to knock them down there is a small window in which you cannot move and it's rather easy for someone that knows that to kill you. This can be somewhat fixed with the help of the Conclave only augment Singularity, which pulls targets towards Nyx, making it much harder to escape the damage and knockdown. Overall, she's a fun frame to play, able to get the job done in any situation, be it solo or team play. You really can't go wrong by picking her. The only downside, if you can call it that, is that after you master her, she gets rather boring because her depth mostly comes from her knowing when to use the skills rather than from the skills themselves, which are pretty straightforward, which is the reason I think not many people play her. Well, I hope this was useful and see you all next time.